Hello, I'm Rachel and I'm going to be explaining today how to insert an NG tube into a patient. Um, so you're going to, <clears throat> before you do anything, um, you're going to make sure that there's an order to place an NG tube in the patient and make sure kind of uh, that the reason, um, that there's a good reason as to why it's ordered and um, that it makes sense um <clears throat> and then before you go in with the patient you can go ahead and gather all your supplies you're going to want gloves you're going to need your um ng tube and there are different sizes so make sure that you um determine which size is most appropriate for your patient um you will need a 60 ml syringe make sure that you have some sort of suction device your stethoscope um, maybe a cup of water, some ice chips, an emesis bag or basin, basin in case the patient gets sick, um, some lubricant, and then adhesive tape to secure the tube um, after it's placed into the patient. So um, gather all your equipment, make sure that you have everything. You're going to go into the patient's room and you're going to practice hand hygiene and um, a gel in and out or wash your hands before you get started and um, introduce yourself, ask the patient's name and birthday and identify them with two patient identifiers. And it would be a good idea again, just to make sure that there is an order um, for this patient and it makes sense that they're getting an NG tube. So once you've gathered all your supplies, you can go in there and do that. Um, you will just need to put on some regular gloves that don't need to be sterile. Um, this would be a good time to explain to the patient um, what's going to happen during this procedure and um, if you know and it's appropriate why they're getting the procedure um, or refer that question to the doctor if it's something that you're not comfortable asking. Uh, if the patient can tolerate it, we want them to sit upright in bed um, just to help with alignment when we're placing the tube. Um, if they're laying down or unable to sit up, then it's still possible to place the NG tube. It just may be a little bit more difficult. So. Um, before you do anything, you want to examine their mouth. Um, you want to examine each nostril or nair, make sure that there's nothing obstructing there and maybe get an idea of which um, nostril you want to um, go into and make sure that it's patent and there's nothing obstructing it there and that the patient will tolerate it on that side. They don't have some sort of like deformity you don't know about that won't allow anything to pass through that um, nair. Um, so you're going to grab your tube and first you're going to measure before you put anything in there so you're going to measure from the tip of the nose and you're going to go down to like the lobe of the ear and then straight down to the patient's um, xiphoid process and this is just kind of a good estimated gauge of how long the tube's um, going to need to be and how far it needs to be advanced into the patient so once you get your measurement it's a good idea to take that end of the tube and mark it with a, a marker of some sort um, one that would be safe for the patient, obviously, or that's not going to penetrate into the tube at all. Um, but that way you have a good marker as to how far you should probably be advancing the tube instead of just going in blind. Um, and it's also a good idea to have a mark on there. Um, it should end up up by the patient's nose after it's inserted, but if it moves at all, you can see if the, um, the marker has come down, you can have a gauge to see if it's if it's moved or if you don't see it or or anything like that so um so you're gonna have all your supplies that we talked about the you want to make sure that you lubricate the end of the ng tube like one to two inches and make sure um that it's like a water um soluble lubricant and then um you're so you're gonna lubricate the tube you're gonna have your suction ready you have a cup of ice if the excuse me if the patient can tolerate it and um, you have an emesis bag or a basin because sometimes putting these in can make the patient sick. So you want to have something ready to go immediately, not going to scramble and get it um, when you need it and you don't have it. So um, you're going to insert the tube into the patient's, whichever one of you're choosing, into their 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 nostril or whichever one they prefer. And um, you want to advance like um, past... Um, you don't want it to coil in the mouth and you obviously don't want to go down the trachea. So you want to make sure um, that you're advancing it um, past the pharynx and into the esophagus down to the stomach and make sure you don't advance it into the trachea. So if the patient's, you know, you're advancing and the patient's saying, oh, if they can talk, sometimes they can. They can talk and they're saying, oh, it's coiling in my mouth or like the back of my throat. It's not like going down, I can feel it you know, coiling up there, then don't keep advancing, pull it back out and start again. Or if the patient's starting to cough or, you know, they are becoming cyanotic or something or saying they can't breathe or they're 
oxygen saturations dropping then stop and pull it out and try again because you don't want to be advancing it into the trachea it needs to be in um, the esophagus sometimes that cup of water um, if you can have the patient tolerate or if they're able to they're not MPO and they're not going to vomit you can have them to tolerate taking small sips of water and that will just help the tube go down into the esophagus and block off that trachea so that we don't actually drop that NG tube into the trachea um, so you're going to advance, once you have gotten um, past the pharynx and can advance down the esophagus into the stomach, you're going to keep advancing until the mark at the end of the tube hits the nose or, you know, you might start getting something back. But um, so you're going to advance <clears throat> all the way until you that mark hits the nose and you're in the stomach. Um, there's a couple, I think, um, ways to verify. You can use that 60 ml syringe and put air into uh, the stomach and listen for it to be like bubbling in the stomach. But the most concrete way that everybody should be practicing is getting a chest x-ray to verify placement of the NG tube. So once um, you get that X chest x-ray to verify placement, then you can um, attach the patient um, to suction on um, whatever setting is appropriate. It could be different for every patient, so make sure you verify if you don't know. Um, it's usually like a, a low pressure suction. Um, and then uh, if it's, you can withdraw just a little bit out of the syringe to get it to go um, if you don't have suction right away, or you just wanna see if there's your, um, if there's gastric contents or what they look like. Um, so once you have um, the NG tube placed, you wanna tape it and secure it to the nose. So that takes some practice, but you basically kind of tape up and around to make sure that it keeps the tube up um, and not from popping out. So um, then, so like I said, verify that they're uh, by chest x-ray that the tube placement is appropriate before you're either advancing anything in there or you're hooking them um, uh, or yeah, it, you can hook them up to suction, um, but make sure that it's the right suction setting. So like I said, if you don't know, make sure you verify with a doctor or another nurse that might know um, what the suction setting should be so that it's not too much suction and it doesn't hurt the patient. So um, uh, before you go, just make sure that it's your tube is secure. Um, make sure that the patient's still comfortable um, and, and you can, um, if you can see, gastric secretions coming out, you certainly want to take note of what they look like if they're bloody um, or whatever they look like because you, you're going to want to document that. So after it's placed and secure, the patient's comfortable and stable, um, you can go ahead and document and just make sure you put the right NG, NG tube size in there, um, how the patient tolerated it, what you set suction to, um, and then what the gastric contents that are being removed look like. Um, and then just if you even have um, gastric contents being removed or if it's not effective and you might need to take it out and replace it. So um, just make sure you document all that appropriate, appropriately and make sure the patient's comfortable. Um, verify by chest x-ray. Then once it's um, verified that that's correct placement, then it should be totally functional with YouTube.